Hello, everyone. Uh, happy Wednesday. Welcome to Wildcard Wednesday. My name is Ben Pulowski. I will be your presenter for today. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. We appreciate it. So our topic for today is making notifications and alerts work for you. So we're going to go through uh, some of the different ways in the database that you can be notified in real time or pretty close to it. If you have uh, an exception generated, if you have an engine fault, if you want to receive a report based on specific conditions and uh, some other things uh, of that nature. So here is our agenda for today's presentation. So just want to start with a little bit of an overview on notifications and alerts, and then we'll get into some more specifics. So setting up alerts in the database in the MyGeotab software, email notifications, some different tools that you have available to you to customize those alerts and notifications, such as creating custom templates, distribution lists, that would be if you want uh, multiple recipients to receive these notifications. You can assign a vehicle to a group, spend a little bit of time on web requests, uh, the send report feature in my GeoTab, and then I'll send you off with some resources. So let's jump in a little bit and uh, get into notifications and alerts. So the idea behind these notifications and alerts is that they can increase the efficiency of fleet managers and maintenance personnel, among others, by decreasing reaction time to important events, and they allow for informed business decisions with up-to-date data. So some examples of that for a fleet manager, you can get real-time emails and pop-up notifications of important rules. Uh, for a maintenance person, real-time engine diagnostic emails, faults, voltage drops, battery levels, uh, check engine lights, things of that nature. Now, my uh, word of advice for using these notifications and alerts, and I'm sure I'll mention this time or two as we go throughout the training here today, is that um, exercise a little bit of caution when you're setting these up. You don't want to get an email. I know I don't want to get an email every time someone is breaking the speed limit, for example. I'm going to get 500 emails a day, and I don't want that. So there are some things that are better suited as uh, a daily report or a weekly report, a driver scorecard, exceptions report, things of that nature. Think of notifications and alerts of that upper level of priority. These are the things that I want to be notified of immediately. I want to know about these as quickly and as soon as possible. So things like that check engine light or a battery voltage level, right? Those are things that are gonna take a vehicle off the road. Those are things that are going to negatively impact your business. Um, maybe that is um, after hours usage, if that's something that I really wanna crack down on and maybe I do wanna get an email as soon as that happens. Uh, maybe it's something like excessive speeding. So not just my regular five miles an hour over the speed limit, but maybe I want to get an email if someone exceeds 90 miles an hour, for example. So just keep that in mind as we go through the presentation today and even more so when you're going through your own database and setting some of these things up. is just to, to exercise caution and, and um, understand when, when the amount of information you're getting is maybe a little bit too much. So notifications and alerts can be used in uh, three separate ways. This is a bit of an oversimplification, but it helps to sort of think of them in these three different categories. So number one, you can have an alert in the database when a rule is broken, which uh, is shown in your database as a pop-up. And there's a couple different versions of pop-ups. We'll get into that. So that's number one. Number two is you can receive an email notification when a rule is broken. So the alert is more so if you're monitoring the database on a consistent basis. Maybe you have someone who pretty much their job is to monitor the database. Email notification, obviously, you don't need to be logged in the database for that. It's just going to send it to your email. You can also get an emailed report when a condition is met. That is the send report feature, which is relatively new, and we'll get into that towards the end of the webinar here today. So looking at that first category there of alerts, and alerts can exist in one of three ways. Uh, option number one, you can have a pop-up, which is a yellow pop-up, and that's used for sort of less urgent alerts or events. You have an urgent pop-up, which is a red pop-up for each instance of an alert, and then you can create a log-only event, which logs a notification in my notifications. So here's what these look like. Um, the 
top that you see there, that yellow bar, that's just the standard pop-up. Below that, the red bar, you have the urgent notifications. Um, now, you don't have to create a, a notification or a pop-up for that. If you look just over to the right of that yellow bar there, uh, you see where it says 16 notifications. So I can opt out of these pop-ups and I can just log it within those notifications and I can go in there and I can view the list and I can see uh, who did what. This is just sort of easy access over a standard exceptions report. But those are basically the three different options that you have. Um, I'll walk you through briefly how to set up these alerts and I'm also going to send you all off with a copy of this presentation. So you'll be able to have this for your own use. You can follow this step-by-step -step guide to set up these different alerts and notifications within your own database after the training today. Uh, but the alerts are set up through your rules page within the My Geotab database. And if you go to your rules page, you have a list of all of your stock rules. And over on the right, you have a pencil icon, you have a question mark, and you have that little envelope, that mail icon. And if you click that mail icon, that is going to allow you to uh, set up alerts or notifications. Now, that's just for the stock rules. They can also be set up for custom rules. And all you have to do is scroll down. Uh, your custom rules are listed at the bottom of your rules page click on the rule and there's a tab that says notifications. From there, everything else is identical to what I'm gonna walk you through right now. So just keep that in mind. You can use it for stock rules or, or rather, and for custom rules. So once you click on that little envelope icon, uh, you get a screen that looks like this, where it has add email, add alert, add driver feedback, or more. What we're focused on right now is add alert. And you can see those are the three different types that I mentioned. You have a pop-up, which is the yellow pop-up. You have an urgent pop-up. And you have log only, which only creates a notification in my notifications. Uh, something that I will point out here, where it says urgent pop-up, displays a red pop-up for each instance of an alert, could produce a lot of noise if used on an easily triggered rule. So that's our way of warning you, exercise caution, right? If you're getting 30 alerts every day, well, maybe you need to think about what's the most important within those different alerts that you're receiving. Choose your option, uh, whether the uh, a pop up or the log only. And what it's going to ask you, first of all, is to choose a pre existing template or create a new one. We're going to get into templates in a little bit, but the uh, default template is device broke the rule rule. So vehicle one broke the rule, speeding over 90 miles per hour is what that would look like. You can also add a new template and you can customize exactly what that uh, notification or what that alert looks like. So you would choose your template and then you would choose the user who is going to receive the pop-up because, well, if you have 30 users in your database, they probably all don't need to be notified if vehicle one is speeding. So you can choose the user who is going to receive the pop-up, select their uh, username from the list there, click add, and then if you want, you can repeat the process if you want this pop-up uh, to appear for multiple users and just make sure that you click save when you're done. So all these alerts, these emails, these notifications, they all follow this pretty standard uh, process here. Go to the envelope icon, select your choice, template, user, and make sure that you hit save when you're done. So alerts appear as red or yellow. Red is urgent, yellow is normal at the top of the screen on login like I showed you before. All alerts create a record in the notification list and the alerts are going to continue to pop up until cleared from the notification list. Down there at the bottom is an example of a notification using a custom template. So it's not just that standard device broke the rule. Um, we have the vehicle, the serial number is currently driving without a seat belt. It gives us the lat long coordinates, the date, and the time, and you have that dismiss button over on the right to clear it out. So that's sort of how those uh, notifications and alerts work. This is the My Notifications list. So that's on the uh, upper right corner near your username and your database name where it says 50 notifications or whatever it says. And it just gives you a list of all of the different uh, notifications. It classifies them as urgent or just as a standard pop-up. And you can click on any one of those notifications for 
some more details. So that's how you set up alerts. So those are just pop-ups within the database. They create a log. You also have the option to set up email notifications. And again, it's the same idea. Go to your rules. You click on that mail icon. You can also set it up for custom rules by clicking on the custom rule and going to the notification tab. Now, instead of add alert, you are going to go to add email. Same as before. You can use the default email template. And as it says down there at the bottom, it includes the vehicle name, the device serial number, the rule broken, and the date and time. That's the default template. There's other information that you can add into that through custom templates. And if you have any custom templates set up, they're going to appear in that template drop down list. So you choose your template, then you choose your user. Now, when you go to add in a user from the, um, uh, when, you, when you're setting up an email notification here and you click on that email box, it's going to show you a list of your users. So if you want to send an email to someone who's already a user in the system, that's fine. They're going to be there already. If you want to, you can send an email notification to someone who is not a user in the system. That's fine. You can just type their email address in manually and click add when you're done. Here is the word of caution. If they are not set up as a user in the system and you're sending them an email notification when a rule is broken, whatever data they receive is going to default to the metric system because they don't have a user profile, they can't be changed to the imperial system. So just be aware of that. Um, so if you want to add them as a user to the system, remember you don't have to give them access to the database. You don't have to give them a lot of visibility to really anything at all. They don't even need to know that they have a login if you don't want to tell them. So really you can just add their email to the system and set it up so that they can receive their emails. Choose your user, click add, and then again you can repeat the process. Uh, this is fine if you want to send an alert out to a couple users. You can just hit add email again and repeat and add some more email addresses into this notification. However, if you have a lot of users, if you're a larger fleet of a few hundred vehicles and you have eight different rules that you want them to be notified about, this is when you get into distribution lists. We're going to get into that in a little bit, but just know that is an option as well. Select your users. Again, make sure you hit save when you're done. So I've mentioned uh, custom templates a few times, and there are three separate applications that you can use these custom templates for. So number one, you have add email template. So that would be setting up uh, if you are creating an email notification for when a rule is broken. You have a web, a web template, which is getting more into advanced use. I'm not really going to get into that, but it allows custom notifications to be posted to a web URL. And then you also have a text template, which is if you want to create a custom pop-up notification uh, for an alert within the database, you would also use that to create custom notifications for the GoTalk if you're using that as well. So um, all of the custom templates use what are called field tokens. There is a sample list of tokens over there on the right. And all a field token is, is that it's a small code that matches a field in the database and it's used within these templates. When it's used in notifications, it'll swap the database value for the code in the version that is sent. So when I create my custom notification and I click on the token address, it'll populate with the address of the exception. Same with database, date, device. So instead of it's basically just telling the system to pull that data and put it in the notification that's sent out. Uh, the tokens will change based on the template type. So you may see some uh, different options depending on if you are setting up a web template or an email template or a text template. Uh, to create a custom template under rules and groups, right up at the top, you have a few buttons there, one of which says notification templates. You can then choose the uh, type of template that you want, whether that's web, text, or email. And then it's just going to ask you to populate the information. So you can name your email template. You can put in a subject for your email template. That's going to be the subject for the email that is sent out. And then you can fill in the body of the template. 
So over there on the right, uh, this is an example of a template we have set up. The name is our custom speeding template. The subject is speeding violation. When that email is sent out, that's going to be the subject of the email. Now here we've combined sort of plain text with those field tokens. So you have vehicle, and then it's going to insert the device information, broke rule, rule, at, time, on, date, driving, speed. And all you have to do is just click on that little uh, token button down there at the bottom, and it's going to insert that into the body of the email. We also have location, and then it's going to insert the address. And then we have map, which is actually kind of a cool feature. It'll include a little screenshot of the, uh, of the map showing exactly where the vehicle was when the exception was generated. So tokens can be added to the subject or to the body text of an email. Don't change the token's name or remove parentheses. All you have to do is basically put your cursor in the body where you want that value to appear and then click the available token button that you want and it'll insert itself automatically. Um, for email templates, exception reports can be attached to the email. So you have that little exception report uh, and it says advanced exceptions detail report. That's a drop down list so I can attach a report to the email. And that's also going to include any custom exception reports that you have added into your database. So that's custom templates. Just make sure that you hit save when you're done. And then when you go through and you set up those alerts and notifications, you can choose that from your template drop down list. Another tool that we have is a distribution list, and a distribution list is used to email a predefined list of users when a rule is broken. So this is if you wanted to have the same 10 users emailed for different events. If you want these three users emailed for speeding, and these seven users emailed for after hours usage, and these 12 users emailed for an engine fault, you don't want to use a distribution list. This is if they are going to the same group of users. If you go back to your rules list, you have a distribution lists button at the top. So click on that. You would click add to create a distribution list. And it's pretty straightforward from here. It looks a lot like you're setting up an email alert or a notification. So you would enter in a name for your distribution list and just follow the same procedure as before. To set up uh, an email distribution list, click email, choose a template, add your users. For an alert, choose a template, choose your users, so on. Click save when you're done. Now to assign a distribution list to a rule, here's where it changes a little bit. You're going to start by clicking on that mail icon over on the far right side of the rule, but instead of going to add email or add alert, you're going to click on more, and then you're going to select distribution list. Choose your distribution list from the dropdown and save when complete. So whether this is going to be an email or an alert, you set that up when you were creating the actual distribution list in this step, if that makes sense. Uh, one of the other things that you can do here is you can assign a vehicle to a group based on certain conditions. So this is going to be best utilized for companies that are using dispatchers. For example, if you want to see vehicles that are available or vehicles that are unavailable based on uh, the length of their trip based on if they're entering a customer zone or if they're exiting a customer zone, you can then go to the map and you can highlight vehicles in a certain group. So I could go to my map and just show me the vehicles that are in the available group and I know who's available to send to my next stop. So again, start with the mail icon. You're going to go to more and then assign to group. You would then choose the group that the vehicle should be assigned to when the rule is broken. So the one that I was showing you before is if they are entering a customer area. That's the rule that I've set up under my notifications. When they're entering a customer area, they are then going to be added to the unavailable group. I would then also want to set up a rule behind that that says if they are leaving a customer area, for example, then I'm going to move them to the available group. So just as before, click Add, and then click Save when you're done. Web requests, I am uh, 
going to go through very, very briefly. Basically, it's a, a way to push data to another web-based system when an, exception, when an exception is generated. For example, uh, we have customers who do things like this. They want to send customer zone entry and exits from your sales vehicles to track customer visits alongside CRM data. And they want to push that data from my Geotab into their own proprietary system. Or they're sending details of a large speeding event to a safety system to track driving events. So maybe if you're working with a fleet management company and they have their own safety system set up and you want to get the two systems to talk to each other. Sort of like a SDK Lite if you want to think about it that way. Uh, it allows you to send packets of data or a URL to an external system. Now, the difference between a web request and an SDK is that a web request occurs in real time. It's based off of an exception. When the exception is generated, it sends the data. The difference between that and the SDK is that the SDK pulls data on a schedule. So ultimately, it just depends on the urgency of the data and exactly what you're trying to do with it. But either one of those is a viable option for you. So here is the send report feature. Again, this is relatively new uh, within the My Geotab database. And this gets into uh, reporting. This gets into some uh, Excel usage a little bit. But what the send report feature does is that it allows you to email a report only if conditions are met. For example, you have your drivers, they're file, uh, filing DVIR reports every day, but I only want to get an email DVIR report if there are vehicles with defects. Another application is the watchdog report. I only want to get the watchdog report emailed to me if I have vehicles that are offline. And these are things that you can configure within Excel. The send report feature is found within the data tab, which is hidden. And I'll walk you through um, how to set that up. But to set up send report, basically start with the report that you want to receive. And under your report views list, select your report and click the export button right up there at the top. So here we have our advanced DVIR logs. I'm going to click export because I need to get this out of the database and I need to do a little bit of work in Excel here. So in Excel, uh, when you have a downloaded report down at the bottom, you usually have a, a couple of tabs. Most reports you're going to have report, or you're going to have summary. Maybe you'll just have one or the other, but you're going to see some tabs down at the bottom of that report. What you're going to do is you are going to right click on one of those tabs and you're going to select unhide because what we need to get to is the data tab. So you're going to unhide this data sheet and click OK. Now be careful when you're doing this. Uh, you can cause some problems with the report if you go into the data tab and you start messing stuff up and changing stuff. So just sort of follow the steps that I'm outlining here and you'll be fine. But just use caution when you are working with the data tab. We keep it hidden for a reason because you can break a report. In the data tab, you have a field called send report. And when you first unhide the data tab, it's going to look like this. It's going to say send report true, right? There's no formula in there. There is it's just the word true. That's all that's in there. Now, what you can do is you can insert a formula in place of where it says true. So you can delete the word true in that cell and you can enter in some sort of true false formula like we've done here. So this is an example of a report that we built, a DVIR report that's only going to email out if there are defects. So I'm starting looking over right over here. I have a formula in here, and it's basically saying count all of the cells that are not blank between O11 and P10,000. Columns O and P are the defects list. So basically, this formula is just saying count how many defects there are. This formula right here references this cell. If C3 is greater than zero, so if 
there are any defects, mark this cell as true. If C3 is not greater than zero, mark this cell as false. And here's what it looks like. So these are the actual formulas up here. These are the results. So number of defects, four, as you see right over here. This number is greater than zero, so now send report is true. If the number of defects were zero, send report would be false, and the report would not send. So that's how that works. You do need to get into Excel a little bit, brush up on your if statements, your true false, but that's what send report does. What you would then do is add the report back into your database under administration, report views, add the Excel file in, and then you would follow the steps to set it up as an emailed report. That's it. There are no other settings you have to enable. Just put that formula in there. You may want to hide that data tab again, um, but add it back into your database. You're good to go. Again, you're going to get a copy of this presentation to follow these steps and these steps to set it up as an emailed report. Uh, one thing that I do want to point out to you is that when you are using send report, the refresh period is how often the system will check for true or false. So here we're setting up our emailed report. We have our type of report, we have our date range, and we have our refresh period. Our refresh period right now is set to every 30 minutes. Every 30 minutes, the system is going to look at that report and check for true or false in that send report field in the report. If it's true, it's going to send it. If it's false, it's not going to send it. It's going to do that every 30 minutes or whatever you have the refresh period sent to. This is a bit of a double-edged sword because, well, you want it to check often to see if it's true or false. But if it's true, it's going to keep sending at whatever that refresh period is. Think about a watchdog report. It's only going to send, I have it set up to only send if a vehicle is offline. If I have vehicles offline, I'm now going to get an emailed report every 30 minutes. So just be aware of that. You can always go in and you can change the refresh period if you want to, but they do work together. Um, so here is our final slide here, and we're going to send you off with some resources. So we have some pretty extensive step-by-step -step guides here listed under how-to guides. One is for notifications. That's in addition to this deck, which you're going to take away. How-to guide on automating reports to set up that emailed report. We have a how-to video on automating reports. We also have a quick reference guide on notifications and setting up emailed reports. So uh, not as detailed as the how-to guide. It's quick start, click here, click here, do this, click save. And then we also have a, another recorded webinar that we did last year on notifications, templates, and distribution lists. You can take a look at that as well. And I am going to right now send you a link into the chat box within GoToWebinar. There is a link to this presentation that we are going through right now with uh, all these step-by-steps -steps that you can follow and that resources page there at the end. And you can take that, you can bookmark it, you can download it, you can use that for your own benefit. So that is going to be a wrap-up for this week's Wildcard Wednesday. Also remember, for more fleet tips and best practices, visit geotab.com slash blog and register for our blogs. We are actively adding great content and reads, so please check it out. We'd love to have you on board. Uh, once again, my name is Ben Pulowski. On behalf of myself and everyone here at Geotab, thank you for joining us on today's Wildcard Wednesday. We wish you a productive and profitable week. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day.